Hi, welcome to another episode of Defense Nation channel. In the last episode, I have discussed how capable and powerful our Navy's 2 AW-159 ASW or anti-submarine warfare helicopters. I have also discussed its weapons, most especially the Rafael Spike and Loss missiles. Today, we will go through this type of missile once again, since it is likely to be used on another helicopter. And no, it's not a naval helicopter. This time, it's an attack helicopter from the Philippine Air Force. This is the AH-1S Cobra from Bell Helicopter, currently the deadliest attack helicopter of the Philippine Air Force. This helicopter is a member of the popular Huey family and is a single-engine attack helicopter, which was produced between 1967 to 2019. Attack helicopter means that it is an armed helicopter, which also means that it is capable of engaging ground targets like enemy infantry and armored vehicles such as tanks. It can be equipped with various heavy armaments or weapons, that is why they are also sometimes called helicopter gunships. Popular examples of such helicopters are the AH-64 Apache from Boeing, Tiger from Eurocopter, which is now Airbus Helicopters, including the T-129 attack from Turkish Aerospace Industries, in which our government has allocated 13 billion pesos for six units. The AH-1 is currently operated by 10 countries and that includes the Philippines. In this video, it is interesting to talk about how powerful an attack helicopter is. And the weapons? Yeah, you could have heard about it before. But have we seen how destructive these are? Some of us probably haven't heard about the TOW missiles before. How about the 20mm 3 barrel gun? mounted on the nose of a helicopter. And a spike and loss? Most likely. We will also try to compare these with other weapons that our military currently uses. So, in this episode, we will have an update on our AH-1S Cobra. What kind of weapon it has and how much damage it could cause to the enemy. How effective it would be to counter insurgents in the country and armed conflicts such as the Marawi siege, the longest urban battle in the Philippines' recent history. Most of us already know that these two units of AH-1S helicopters were donated by the Kingdom of Jordan and were delivered in Clark Air Base in 26 of November 2019. The Department of National Defense or DND spokesperson Arsenio Andalong in an interview said, quote, will be used primarily for close air support in internal security and counter-terrorism operations of the armed forces of the Philippines, end quote. Before this pair of AH-1S were delivered, our military do not have purpose-built attack helicopters in its arsenal. The next best thing we have are the 15th Strike Wing's 8 AW109E from Augusto Westland, which is now Leonardo, which have seen action during the Marawi siege back in 2018, as well as several units of MD520MG. As I have mentioned earlier that in this video, we will highlight the destructive power of the AH-1S Cobra we will focus more into three main weapons. The M197 20mm Gatling gun, the TOW missiles, and the spike and loss. First, the guns. The M197 20mm 3 barrel Gatling gun from General Dynamics was specifically designed for helicopters such as the AH-1S, as well as for light aircrafts and small attack naval vessels. It can fire 1,500 shots per minute. That is an amazing 25 shots per second. 
Compare that to the AW159's FN Herstal's maximum 1100 runs per minute. Muzzle velocity is the speed of the projectile or the bullet the moment it leaves the barrel of the gun. Imagine this. If we compare that to the speed of an F1 racing car which clocks it around mm, 375 kph or 341.75 feet per second or to human's sneeze which is a little bit over 146 feet per second the bullets from the gun gun is extremely fast as you can see in the video the damage it can inflict on the ground and the area it can cover. These AH-1s are from the Japan Self-Defense Force Army who conducted live fire exercise. Now, the missiles. The AH-1S Cobra is capable of carrying the American anti-tank missile called TOW missiles, being produced by one of the largest defense manufacturers in the world, Raytheon Technologies. TOW stands for Tube Launched, Optically Tracked, Wire Guided. So yes, it is guided by a thin wire and can be carried by the infantry on the ground and can be mounted on various types of vehicles and helicopters such as the AH-1. The TOW missile was designed to hit and destroy heavily armored military vehicles such as tanks or amphibious landing vehicles. And at the time of writing, this type of missile is being operated by more than 50 countries. And how much damage this missile can inflict? Look at this video in the tank, or what is left of it. Depending on the variant, the tow missile is capable of penetrating 900mm thick armor that is more than 35 inches thick. Or, get this. It can penetrate a double reinforced concrete walls of fortified structures as thick as 200 millimeters. That is almost 8 inches. Imagine if our country had this during the Marawi siege. It could have changed the outcome of that conflict and perhaps ended it earlier, which, by the way, took five long and agonizing months. The range of this missile varies depending on the model or variant. The basic ones have a range of more than 3.5 kilometers, and the newer variants can have a range of up to 4.5 kilometers. And it weighs between 19 to 22.6 kilograms depending on its warhead. And here's a good news and an update. The Philippine Daily Inquirer on the 4th of October 2020, reported that the pair of AH-1 our Air Force received had been configured to fire the tow missiles and a spike and loss. The picture shows that it is currently configured for the tow missiles. And this confirms that these units are the Tsefa, originally from Israel, which were transferred to Jordan in 2014 to help in border security. This brings us to the third weapon I wanted to highlight. The Spike and Loss or Non-Line-of-Sight missile is known to be the longest-range air-to-surface missile currently available for helicopters. This is the same type of missile that our Navy's two AW-159s are equipped with. The Spike family of missiles are being manufactured by an Israeli defense company, Rafael. The same company who supplied the Spike ER used in our Navy's multi-purpose assault craft or MPAX. The Spike Anlos is significantly larger missile than the other Spike variants, with an overall weight of around 70 kg. This missile is electro-optically guided and was said to have a range of up to 25 kilometers. But what does Electro-optically guided means. To make it more simple, imagine this. The missile itself has various sensors and a camera on its tip. And whatever it's looking at or being captured by that camera is being sent to the operator's monitor. In this case, the co-pilot. 
who can then monitor and ensure that he will hit the right target or the bad people. As you can see on the video, it also has the ability to switch between targets right in the middle of flight due to this sophisticated guidance system. Or you can just fire it to the direction you want and just guide it to where you want to hit it with minimal collateral damage. You are probably asking where can the AH-1 use the spike and loss? Well, with many types of warheads available, the application could be limitless. It can be used in urban and high-intensity conflicts, such as the one we had in Marawi. You do not need to have a visual confirmation of your target, but if you can confirm their location, you can use the spike and loss and guide it to where you want it to hit. That means you can guide it through a window even in a fortified, hard-to-reach area of the battlefield. And just like the tow missile, it can also be used to hit armored vehicles. Now, if you compare which one is better, well, it depends. I mean, the spike analog is highly accurate and very flexible. It can be launched from land, air, and naval platforms. Plus, it has a very long range, versus the tow missile that can only be fired on a line of sight basis. That means you can only hit the target you can see. But what if your military has limited cash? A tow missile costs between 55,000 to 94,000 US dollars per unit, depending on the variant, compared to 210 to 250,000 a pop of the spike and loss. See, you can have four units or four pieces of the tow compared to only one with the spike and loss. The arrival and inclusion of the AH-1 attack helicopters to our military's assets, specifically to the Philippine Air Force, boosted its ability to provide air support to ground troops. I hope that with these gunships, a repeat of the Mama Sapon incident back in 2015 will not happen ever again. Or if another armed conflict, such as the Marawi siege, will not drag for a long period of time. And perhaps these groups of local terrorists will now think twice before engaging our troops. This in turn will save a lot of lives on either sides. I just hope that additional purpose-built attack helicopters will be acquired by the DND and AFP soon. Now, I'm quite interested to know if our government will really wait for Turkey's T-129 attack helicopters. Would that be a wise decision given the situation we have with several bad actors who grow brazen day by day? Or would it be better to buy from another manufacturer but suffer on the number of units we can buy? What are your thoughts on this? If you have things to share with us, Feel free to leave a comment below. I'm really curious on what you guys think about this issue. Well, that's it for now. But before I go, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who watched and liked my videos and those who subscribed to my channel. I do my best to provide you with accurate information and creating a video such as this takes a lot of time and effort and would love to make more videos to update and at least inform people about our military's modernization program. So, if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and the notification bell below. Again, this is Mac, and thank you for watching the Defense Nation channel. Have a nice one.